Hey everyone, my name is Josh Callender and I'm an engineer on the developer experience team at Lyft. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how we did a migration from our legacy infrastructure to a new one based on Next.js. To do that, let's go back in time to when I first joined Lyft in 2015. Um, back then we were an Angular shop and our Angular code was built using Grunt. Uh, it's a pretty common stack back then, but as uh, most people found, as we were adding features and pages to the system, it got slower and slower. Uh, and that was because our JavaScript bundle kept getting larger and larger, taking it longer to process and render that code. So uh, later that year, we introduced our very first React service to really address those performance concerns, mostly through using Webpack and server-side rendering. And once we did that, uh, everybody kind of wanted to get on this new service architecture and really take advantage of those performance wins. However, we weren't quite ready for them to do that yet. First, we had to create a new tool called Frontend Build. Frontend Build is that Webpack experience in a package. Uh, so it's a zero config system for us internally so that we didn't have to worry about uh, setting up a new build system every time we created a new front end service. But creating new front end services was still pretty hard. We had to figure out server side rendering and things like that. So then we created the service template. The service template acts a lot like Create React App in that uh, you could enter in a few configuration options and it would output you some code and allow you to start coding right away. And that really opened the floodgates for us and we started seeing more and more services get spun up to the point that we were seeing over a hundred services and during this time more people were creating more services but we were also working on front-end build to introduce new technology things like ESLint just in TypeScript. But not only that, we're also making changes to our Webpack system to continue to improve the performance. Um, but what we found uh, in early 2019 was that this system was getting more and more difficult to maintain uh, so that we would need to make a change. So the first thing that we did, like any uh, good drivers know, is that we checked our mirrors and evaluated the situation to make sure it was safe for us to do something and to really get an idea of what was happening around us. Um, so the first thing that we did was identified our core issues. Specifically, um, first off, was our drifting infrastructure. Uh, so what we found was with our service template approach that as it was a lock in time, so our new services didn't looked very different than our older services. And that also leads to the next problem, where was staying up to date was very difficult. We didn't really have a solution to updating people's service template code um, once they've generated their service but also things like their dependencies were also hard to stay up to date. Even our team struggled with staying up to date on the latest Webpack things. Um, so the end result was that we would update something, but there would still be a number of other issues, and then we would be in this constant cycle of being behind on our updates. And then this also led to another issue with a proliferation of infrastructure code. Um, that server-side rendering code that we injected into our service template also was then coming out into every single service. And for the most part, there were slightly different implementations, and it caused a lot of problems for us to maintain going down the road. Uh, we also found that per pesky performance issue was back. Um, this was an issue because, again, our JavaScript bundle started to get larger and larger. And while we had Webpack chunking available, we asked our service, our um, product engineers to worry about this, um, rather than the infrastructure team, who's much more familiar with the situation. Then we also had problems with common tasks being very difficult. Uh, a, a good example of this is like if you wanted to add style components to a single microservice, you would have to do it for all of your microservices, and each time it would be a little bit different, and um, in the end it's really you're just doing the same thing over and over, but it should be very simple, but it turned out to be difficult. And this all led to a lack of standardization. And then that meant it was very difficult for us to share code between teams at Lyft, causing us to do a lot of duplicate efforts. So we thought that this was kind of a, a pro common problem in the industry, so we took a look to open source to see what we could do to fix this issue. Um, and that's when we really found Next. Uh, and as soon as we found it, we also noticed that four of our six major issues instantly went away with uh, Next.js. Architecture would no longer be drifting, and our infrastructure code would no longer be part of services because it would all be wrapped in the Next.js executable. Um, we also don't have to worry about our performance bottlenecks anymore because Next.js build system is highly efficient and it allows us to punt off all of that difficult work to Next.js itself. And finally, the lack of standards is cleaned up 
because we are able to use Next.js's architecture of saying that you have to put pages, your pages and the pages and components and components. And just that simple standardization really helps our infrastructure team move forward. Um, so right out of the box, we knew Next.js was going to be a great experience for us and solve a lot of our issues. Um, but it wasn't just that it was a great technology. There's also a wonderful community around Next.js, and that's really what sold it for us. Um, things like just this conference alone, where we get to come and experience all these awesome talks and learn even more about Next.js. But there's also things like the Stack Overflow questions that everybody is asking and answering, um, as well as documentation. Uh, the Next.js docs are great and allowed us to um, ask people to self-service and learn uh, on their own, but it also gave us a chance to more easily learn the systems as we went to. Um, but we didn't figure out all of our problems. So the, one of the problems left is that staying up to date is hard. Next.js does help with this a little bit, but we wanted to do a bit more in-depth work here. Um, so we designed a system around JS code shift, um, which it uses JavaScript's abstract syntax tree to quickly update and safely update code. Our common tasks were difficult to keep up to date. Um, so we designed a plugin system around Webpack Tappable, um, which is the library that Webpack actually uses to build its plugin system. So now we have a plan in place and we needed to start communicating that to everyone. So we put on our turn signal and named the project Lyft Service and started to talk about it as much as we could, as early as we could. So before we even started to build it, we started asking people, would this solve your problems? Is this right? Um, and we started presenting it at different places and started asking for as much feedback as we could. And then we started to build it. Um, so the first thing that we did was we took core Next.js and investigated to make sure that all of this would work inside of our infrastructure itself and figured out how Next.js would work in our infrastructure. And then with that, we can created a configuration generator, much like what we had inside of front end build um, to use in, for Next.js. So we could have a uh, easy system migration for people to easily understand what's happening. Next, we started working on the plugin system to allow us to inject our common code into multiple areas of the code base. So where there are hooks for Next.js, we have a hook for our plugin system. Um, and once the plugin system was built, we really started focusing on um, this upgrade system with JS Code Shift. So let's take a quick look at a plugin in Lyft Service. So here's an example of our plugin file where we're importing the Redux plugin, adding our reducers and some middleware, and configuring it. And that's it to set up Redux in our app. Um, so now we feel like we've kind of really got everything going. We have a really clean interface for plugins to solve that issue. We have a good um, upgrade system in place, and we know that the core experience is going to be great with Next.js. So we start looking around to check our blind spots and make sure we didn't miss anything. So the first thing that we did was we wanted to make sure that all of the stuff that we built works. So we created a new test environment called Kitchen Sink, where we put all of our plugins in one place and started to interact with them. Um, this also gave us a great example repo for anybody that wants to add one of these plugins. So once we created this kitchen sink environment, we had a pretty good understanding that it, our theories would work. Um, so then we started beta testing it. And we, uh, the first thing that we actually did was go back to our legacy systems and updated our service template to just use Next.js. This gave people opportunity and exposure to use the simplest features. And then we worked up from there. Um, adding things like the plugins, etc. And as we were doing these beta tests, we found an issue with our migration story. Um, basically, React Router is what we were using for our routing system in the past. And now we're switching over to use Next.js, which has a very different routing system based on the file system instead of components. Um, so our migration story started to break down. And we weren't sure how we would take all of these React routes, React Router routes, and migrate them to the Next.js system. Um, basically, we found that React Router has a number of different ways to actually define routes. So that made it very difficult for us to create a code mod to migrate all of these different cases for React Router to the one case of Next.js. So we looked at another way, and um, instead of migrating away from React Router, we figured out a way to include it for this migration. 
Um, so we simply imported our React router, render the routes, and then have a fall through to then go to the Next.js system, allowing our uh, engineers to migrate their routes one at a time to get the most performance benefits from Next.js, fixing our migration story. So after that, we continued to go through beta testing and made sure that everything was right and that we were still following the correct path. So then we started getting feedback that it was about ready and that we should start going to a wider audience. So then we felt like it was finally safe to change to the fast lane. So then we started having migration sessions where we'd have five to 10 engineers come join us and migrate their um, system with us. And what that did is it allowed us to start to build a community around this um, technology so that we weren't the only ones helping this migration, but all of the engineers in the um, migration session would work together to migrate all of those services at the same time. And in these sessions, we t wanted to teach the why behind everything, why we wanted to build this plugin system, why we have these migration systems, so that people kind of understood um, what was happening and would help us out if there were any other system problems. And also, uh, we wanted everyone to be able to contribute back to those systems so that it's not just our team creating plugins, but anybody at Lyft can. Um, and then the most important thing was that we wanted to complete the migration for that service in the session. This allowed us to really um, quickly migrate all of these systems. So let's take a quick look at how long this migration would take. And that's it. It's really just a quick, uh, you run the command, uh, our code mods will go through safely updating all of the code and allow us to continue the migration. Um, so that allowed us to really quickly migrate all of these services. So let's take a quick look at the results. Um, one of the numbers that I cared the most about is the developer iteration time. This is the time between hitting save in your editor and seeing those changes reflected in your web browser. Before we were at about um, 10 to 12 seconds, and now we're down to 350 milliseconds from the save to seeing those changes, which is really cool. And this is purely from Next.js. Um, another thing that we found is that our bundle size were drastically smaller. So um, on the exact same page of our example service, we had an 845 kilobyte reduction in our bundle size to view the exact same code. And finally, we were able to remove 10,000 lines of infrastructure code per service before we even migrated a single plugin. Um, so this really helped us uh, with maintenance across the board of our fleet of services. And that's how we changed lanes at Lyft. Um, so everybody knows uh, we're hiring at Lyft. And it's uh, if you're curious about any of the open positions, it's lyft.com slash careers. Thank you so much for taking the time to hear about our migration to Next.js. Um, I'll be in the Next.js conference Discord channel if you have any questions, um, and I'd be happy to answer them. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and don't forget to use your turn signals.